All right, here we go. Jay Morrison, welcome back. Hey, peace, brother. How are you? I'm good, man. Last time we were on here, uh, we had a very interesting debate. We did, and everyone loved it. Everyone loved it. Everyone loved it. That video, I think, is approaching 400,000 views. We'll take it. Yeah, talking about, yeah. Finan- talking about financial talk and in, in, in our culture, that's, that's a good thing. Absolutely. And I, I think at the end of the day, whether you choose to follow your philosophy or my philosophy when it comes to investing, the fact is that you should be investing in one way or another. You got to make your money work for you. Your money got to work too. You can't sit there and just depreciate in value through inflation. It has to work. It has to earn. Right. Every dollar you have is like a little worker. Yep. And every penny that dollar makes becomes your little worker as well and so forth and so forth. And before you know it, you got a whole army working for you. Yeah. We call it the opportunity cost of money. Right. So I talk about if you have $10,000. You might have it in a safety deposit box, in a shoe box, under your mattress. You might have it in a checking account, savings account, a CD, mutual fund, 401k. But all those different saving instruments all give you either no ROI or some type of ROI return on your investment. Or real estate. And you get some mm-hmm. kind of return on your investment, some kind of tax advantage, or some type of, type of appreciation or equity. you got to choose which vehicle is best for you for your money to earn. And look at where can my money be best parked next. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about your new project first. Okay. So you have, uh, well, I'll just let you explain it. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. Man. I haven't slept in like three weeks. Um, <laughs> we have an historical IPO happening on June 1st, initial public offering. Uh, for the last two and a half years, I've been very focused. And for four years from inception of concept, uh, I've been focused on creating a real estate investment fund, a crowd fund that's transparent and that's regulated, and a way for the urban community to pull its dollars together to buy back our blocks, to build Black Wall Street, to to stop gentrification of our neighborhoods, and to passively invest in real estate. And so I've been working with the SEC, Security Exchange Commission, uh, which you know, but for our audience. I've been working with the SEC for the last two years to get qualified. We were qualified on February 2nd and approved to have this Regulation A Tier 2 crowdfund called the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. And so we have a million shares of our company that uh, we have in our IPO on June 1st. Each share is $50 per share. And anyone can invest and be a shareholder, an equity partner in our fund for as minimum as 10 shares or a $500 investment. And each of our investors get an 8% preferred return, meaning before we make any profits as a company, you get your 8% pref, right? Your 8% preferred return annually and they get 50% of the profits that we make uh, within our fund. We as the fund managers get a 5.5% management fee, and we get the other 50% uh, share of the profits. But it's an economic vehicle, the first of its kind that is 100% black owned and operated, the first of its kind in the country. Uh, So we made history in doing that. And it's the first time that someone who is a community organizer, community leader, social activist, such as myself, uh, who has offered shares to the public for the advancement and revitalization of our community, the first time someone has done that since 1919 with Marcus Garvey. Okay, so you said it's, it's a, real, a real estate investment fund. Yes. Now, I'm familiar with real estate investment trusts, REITs. Yes. Is, is this the same thing or different? It operates very much the same way. The only difference between the, or one of the main key differences between our fund and a REIT is that a REIT has uh, different tax designations and different tax implications. Uh, If you look at sec.gov and you search the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, the SEC actually has us listed as a REIT because our fund, this Regulation A Tier 2 fund, is so new that they even haven't given it a a, a new designation. So we're we're, we're designated from SEC standpoint as a REIT, but we don't operate from a tax perspective as a REIT. We are a a real estate investment trust, or or excuse me, real estate investment fund or real estate investment crowd fund, private equity fund. Okay, so when you say it's coming out for sale, which uh, exchange is it coming out on? No exchange right now. We have the opportunity to do that in the future if we like, uh, but this is rolling out strictly to the public as a private company but it still is a public offering. And you have to go to our website, Tulsa, T-U-L-S-A, Tulsa Real Estate Fund.com in order to register, self-accredited as a uh, non-accredited investor or an accredited investor. And then you can choose how you'd like to invest and at what amount. 
Okay, so why is it coming out privately as opposed to on like a NASDAQ or a... a well, there's no point in paying NASDAQ the fees, right? We have direct to consumer, direct to the market. We have an audience. Well, we, we, we you, have also a, have the, you also have the exposure of a NASDAQ. You know, I'm suddenly you're open to a lot of, uh, you know, established investors all around the planet. And that's a phase two. But our business model, right, and our mission is based on the everyday person, the working class person. So prior to 2012, the everyday person was called a non-accredited investor, someone who has a net worth less than $2 million or makes less than $250,000 a year, could not invest in any of these investment funds or investment trust, right? So, Well, I mean, people could buy a REIT just like they buy a regular stock. Like any, any person with, you know, whatever, whatever the REIT costs, which would be anywhere from, I don't know, $20 to $100, whatever, could go and buy a REIT, right? You could, you could buy a REIT stock. So yeah, pardon yeah. that. But to my, a, a fund, right? So a private equity fund, a hedge fund, uh, any kind of, uh, you know, privately held fund. Correct. Non-accredited investors cannot invest in those kind of funds. And so right. to, buy a, to buy a hedge fund, you have to be worth at least a quarter million dollars and have a certain income and so forth. Yeah, you got to be worth, actually got to be worth uh, $2 million or make, $2 million or, or make $250,000 a year. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, I, got, to be I, got, a I got it the wrong way. But right. President Obama passed the Jobs Act in 2012, which changed those regulations and which introduced this Regulation A Tier 2 fund, which we have, which allows the everyday person, a person making less than two fifty a year or net worth less than $2 million, to now participate in the same kind of opportunities that the wealthy or the upper middle class uh, had prior to 2012. So our focus, and while we're not going to NASDAQ or one of the exchanges, is that we want to go directly through the crowd, leveraging our audience, leveraging our influence, our grassroots uh, uh, movement, as well as social media, to say to the everyday person, hey, look, you have the opportunity now to own pieces of hotels, of hospitals, of farmland, of schools, of any of the kind of assets that we acquire, blocks of houses, right, tax deed sales. We're going to be at the auction steps now with millions of dollars competing with the major hedge funds, but where the crowd now is a part of it with us and we all break bread together. And, you all, and your minimum investment is, again, just 10 shares, which is $500 for you to be not a, a, a donation or a GoFundMe, but actually an, an equity owner, an investor, and shareholder in the fund. Okay, so why 10 shares as opposed to just one share? Because you could buy one share of a REIT. Correct. One share would be just too expensive, right? With the processing fees, which are third-party administrator fees, which are auditing fees, and all the other things that we have to do from a compliance standpoint. So there's a lot of SEC compliance that we have to do to be totally transparent. So for those who are like, oh, this is a pyramid scheme, this is a scam. No, we are so, you could see our operating agreement, subscription agreement, operating memorandum, like you can see everything in our fund, our, our auditing, our books are all open to the general public. And so because of all those costs, uh, it would not make sense at fifty dollars for us to process those fees, and wouldn't make sense for the, the, the borrower or investor, excuse me, as well. Okay, so you have this fund, mm -hmm. and you're going to go public on this particular date, June first. June first. Yep. TulsaRealEstateFund.com. Uh, so let's just say a hundred people buy each buy five hundred dollars worth. So okay. that's. Uh, Five thousand. Well, uh, a hundred people times five hundred is what? Uh, Fifty thousand. I guess. 5, yeah. I mean, I don't even do numbers. I don't even do numbers that small. So I, I mean, <laughs> okay, it's, it's, it's hard to compute on. that. I don't. I mean. Okay, hold on. So if a hundred people do it, so let's just say a thousand people. Right. Well, let me start. Well, right now, okay. we're over ten thousand uh, subscribed, invest, uh, subscribed, self-accredited uh, investors who are ready to invest. But just say a thousand. Cool. Okay, let's just say ten thousand. Yeah, put up five hundred. That's five million. Right, that's five million dollars. So you yeah. have ten thousand people that are ready to put five hundred dollars down. You now have a chunk of five million dollars. Cool. Right. Yep. Now you're selling off a certain. Well, how many shares you said? A million shares. A million shares. So does that mean that you own a million shares as well? No. There's just a million shares. And our fund and the Reg A tier two funds are capped at 50 million, right? So that's our cap. We can't raise more than 50 million in a given year. Um, that's part of the, uh, the regulation. And so we have a million shares, $50 per share, and we keep raising our capital. Our, our first uh, tranche of our raise is 10 million, our second is 15, and the last 25 we'll do in our third phase. Okay, so you don't own any shares yourself? No, I'll, I'll own as a, uh, or as a company. So, oh, that's one thing. 
individuals or companies can own shares. You don't have to be a person to do it. And so okay. on June 1st, I'll be investing at minimum $10,000 into the fund for 200 shares. And I'll challenge anyone to match me at that 10 stacks. If anybody wants to go higher at 50, we could do that too.